always be a significant event in my life. You see it here in my house. You see it on my truck. The stickers will come off. I'll, I, I'll let go some, but you really won't ever totally let go because it's a part of you, always will be. The crew will always be a part of me as I, them, again, for what we share. And the ship will always be our ship. You know, when you get a command like this, like a destroyer, and it was my first time getting a small ship like this, you think about the size of the crew, you know, everybody knows everybody, and then to see her actually pretty ship shape and shiny, and all the signal flags flying forward to aft, that makes you feel proud. It was, what well, really was hard on us because we went there, you know, we, you know, we took them to the ship and uh, watched it sell off and saw a tear fall from his eye. The morning before the attack, we, um, you know, we had just successfully transited uh, the Suez Canal. We had orders to refuel and take on over 200,000 gallons of fuel. Uh, some of the crew, uh, before we even deployed, felt nervous. It was maybe because it was their first time deploying. Some experienced sailors also felt some bad vibes, don't know why. But you know, I think it's like that in life when you get this gut feeling sometimes that something ain't right. Yeah, it's October 12th at 11.18. Actually, early that morning, we, it was just a brief stop for fuel. Then right after that, they passed the word for regular early chow, which is at 11.15. Uh, they were serving chicken fajitas. I think everybody will tell you that. And, um, and then the blast happened. Damaged in a terrorist attack in Yemen. American sailors were killed, injured, US missing. US Navy officials in the U.S. today cold. said suspected suicide bombing. It was a, a deafening sound, but I, I recall more just feeling it than hearing it. The pressure of it knocked me back in my chair. And along with that, all the lights went out. The next thing that I can really recall from the blast is just this uh, putrid, kind of acrid smoke. It was very hard to breathe. Everybody was choking from the, from the smoke. I went into work. I walked in and I looked at the television because it was on. It was saying breaking news, you know, attack on the USS Cole. And then it, my mind just froze, and I was thinking, you was cold. I, I didn't want to believe that was a ship. Uh, we have lost everything, you know, the uh, main machine room instantly flooded. We lost operations, we lost communications. We had nothing. So I basically had to go from being a command master chief now to using my old corpsman skills. We instantly, you know, we lost 17 sailors. We had well over 50 casualties. You live with it every day that these are young men and women that you knew personally. You know, we had a crew of 275. And to respectfully have to put them in a body bag is the worst thing I could ever think of. And to think of their loved ones back home having to deal with that later, that goes through your mind. And what do you say later? I see two men come getting out of the car. One had, both of them had the uniforms. And I know from TV that they, when they come to your house, they're not coming to tell you good news. And so I just kept walking, you know, walk right past my car. And they walk up to me and they say, are you Diane McDaniels? And I said, no. And they asked me again, and I said, yes, because I just didn't want to know. So we went back up, and that's when they told me that he was missing. And then, then the guy, he had walked toward the back of the apartment. He came back in and he said, well, he came back to me and he said, Ms. McDaniels, he said, uh, I have to tell you that your son is dead. And I said, well, how can he be dead? Because you just told me he was missing. And they said that he had been identified as being dead. So that's how we found out. It's October 12th in the evening. Yeah, that he had died. Uh, a kid I stood watch with every day, um, OS2 uh, Saunders. Both of his legs were, were busted up so bad they were out of shape on the, 
you know they're all twisted on the stoke stretcher that they're carrying him on and uh still the same cheery personality he gives me two thumbs up and says they're taking care of me master chief as they were <laughs> as they're carrying him off on a stoke stretcher and uh he was the only shipmate that made it off the ship and over to the hospital that, that passed away over there. Every, every other one that we got off the ship and triaged, you know, to get off soon enough, they made it. Uh, the rest of them died before we ever got them off the ship. You know, we had no food stores, no food, potable water's gone. Uh, even in things like you think about, don't think about his heads. So, you know, you got to think of preventatively, preventive medicine. You got to worry about dysentery. A lot of challenges. And then you got the enemy on top of that. You still have to worry about. You know, we had to respect each other's decisions and follow orders from junior people. And we did that. And that's what I really feel saved the ship because even chiefs were following orders of junior engine men that knew what they were doing so we could get the right thing done to save our ship and our shipmates. She, we, we almost lost her, and she would have been laying on her port side, sunk. Um, once we got through all that and, and getting all the bodies off, it took, uh, it took about 12 days. People uh, called us heroes. They called us that when we came back. I think most of the shipmates, we just saw ourselves as doing our job. Um, it, it was being sailors being sailors. I think that's good to keep the story alive and, and, like, and it's a lesson learned. I'm glad he did what he did as far as serving because that's what he wanted to do. And, but, um, but one thing I can say is that um, even though 17 died, because I have to include the other ones too, it's not, it wasn't just him, 17 died to save thousands because now they are now protected. And so I just feel that don't let them him and the crew members that died to have died in vain, you know, let's let it be a lesson learned because I wouldn't want anyone else to go through what I went through and the other family members went through because we went through a lot. When I left her, she was on stilts down in Pascagoula with big holes in the side of them, removing the main engines repairing the 40 by 60 foot hole in the side with the American flag flying aft. And that's the way I had to leave her. I was saddened. I would have never thought in my life that I'd have to go through something like that. But when she was fixed, put back, it was pride because we told them son of a bitches that we were not defeated and that we were coming back. And she's out there just like other destroyers serving and doing their job, doing what they're trained to do so I can be safe at home here in North Carolina. <laughs>